become one human family to the moon one human family on to mars one human family asteroids one human family jupiter one human family saturn's rings one human family uranus one human family neptune one human family kuiper belt one human family pluto one human family planet nine one human family or cloud one human family here we come one human family here we come one human family here we come one human family here we are one human family here we are one human family ladies and gentlemen mike mongo pa 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 pow and i know who you are i know who you are i've been waiting for two days to see you again i hope you're well welcome to mike mongo's astronaut adventures Pow, pow, pow. How you like me now? <laughs> I hope everything is good with you. You know what today is? It's Fantastic Friday. 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 Did you figure it out yet? It's Fantastic Friday, Popo Pow. And we, this entire week, have been asking this question. How can I be an astronaut, Popo Pow? How you like me now? And we got all kinds of, we got all kinds of insight. And we got a special guest today. My people, we've got a special guest today. Her name is Therese Jones with SIA, the Satellite Industry of America. She's amazing. We've been working together for a while, she and me. And, and Cyan Proctor, and David Lockett, and Juan Diaz, Jose Infante. Like, I mean, some of my friends. Juan Diaz, Jose Infante, yes. All, all of my friends, and, and, and uh, Tiffany Frierson. Yeah, people that get to work together to encourage you to pursue and get, acquire, get astronaut jobs in space. Holy moly, Jeff Spicoli. Yep, that's the rights. That's the rights, all rights. Getting you in space is job one. Getting you to space. Getting you to do the things. Well, actually, getting you to do the things that get you to get to space, that's job one. Getting you to do the things that get you to get to space. That's job one. Getting you to do the things that get you to get to space. That's the whole deal. That's what we get to work on. And, and that's why you're here. That is why you're here. Look, if you being here and working to be an astronaut or practicing the same skills that allow, allow someone to grow up, to live, work, and play in space and become a human heir, allows you to have a joyful and satisfying life, I'm, I'm enrolled. I'm for that. Let's think about this. Like, look, like, it's like a global climate change and this kind of stuff. What if, what if, uh, what if all we did was make the world a better place? Like, what if our goal wasn't necessarily to fix everything? It's just to make everything good. Like, what if there wasn't a problem? What if we weren't working on a problem, but we were working on a solution anyway? Think about that. Like, if we're working to make the world a better place, it doesn't mean that the world's a bad place to begin with. It means that we want to live in the best place that we can. And we want, in the same way is true for you in growing up to become uh, uh, whoever you become. Whether you use these skills that we're developing on Mike Mongo's Astronaut Adventures to become a space explorer, a human heir, or you use them and find that there's something that you love doing. It, what, if the, what if in studying to be a human heir or a space explorer or an astronaut, you, di you discover something completely, com you, completely surprising about yourself and that you pursue that. I did not know 
that I wanted to be a teacher when I was you. I certainly did not know that. And then I grew up and I learned all the stuff that I learned and had the life experiences I had and I began engaging with you. And then I realized, oh my Google, this is the thing I want to do more than anything. And that's why I do it. This is the thing that I want to do more than anything. So that's what we should pursue. If we have, if we set a goal for ourselves and it's not the right goal, we're going to be unsatisfied. We're going to be, especially like, what if we have an idea, like we want to do something, but then when we do it, it doesn't fulfill us. That's not bad. That's learning about ourselves. When we learn our, about ourselves in this way, it is wonderful. It's surprising. When I was you, in fact, first thing, I wanted to be a superhero. Then I wanted to be an astronaut. And then I wanted to be a rock star. And then when I got to be in between me and you, I realized I didn't want to be a rock star. And then I started working as a scientist. I started working as an artist. I started working as military. I started working as a college student. I started working as international traveler. I started working as business owner. Started working as entrepreneur, which is a person who creates businesses. I started working as, oh, I started doing all kinds of, of uh, I don't know, like business stuff. People call it marketing and branding and, but a lot of it is, is design. So I would, I would chalk all that up to design, even if it's business stuff. Like as long as you're being creative, I call it design. And I got to work in the computer industry like all the time. And in doing all of those different careers, which you're going to get to do, you're going to get to do a whole bunch of different careers. We don't just do one career. When, like I always talk about Cyan Proctor and I always talk about Leland Melvin, they brought so many careers to what they did to being an astronaut. And, and uh, Nicole Stott is an astronaut and she is also an artist and she brought art to astronautics. So what are you bringing to astronautics? If being an astronaut is your goal, what are you bringing to it? If you look at it like, the, like not how to solve a problem, but how to create a solution, like the problem is how do I become an astronaut? That's a problem. That's the problem. It's not a, it's not a bad problem. It's, the, it's like a math problem. How do I become an astronaut? But don't look at it like a problem. Look at it like a solution. Like becoming an astronaut is the solution for becoming who I am as a person. Have you ever thought about that? That you doing the things that you want to do and pursuing the things you have a passion for and that are in your heart that you really love doing. Play is a lot of fun and I like to bring play to everything that I do. But I didn't, become, I didn't grow up to become a player. I, I, I bring play to all the stuff that I do. Even when I'm exercising, I make it a game. I make it fun. Uh, when I'm doing laps in the pool and I swim the ocean, see how long I can hold my breath underwater. And I practice that, stretching. I make it fun. They're not, it's, it's a problem if I don't stretch. It's a problem. I stretch so that I become more limber and flexible, but that's not why I'm doing it. I'm doing it for the solution. And the solution is that I will become a lot, I'll be able to do a lot more th things in more fun ways. Learning about myself and expanding myself or learning about yourself and expanding yourself is the solution. You get to solve who you are. It's not a problem. Who am I? Who am I? Like, have you thought about that? What does it mean to be human being? What does it mean to be a human being? Eventually you will think about that. Some students think about it really early. What is this phenomenon that I am? And so what is it that I'm bringing to space? What is this experience that is, we call a human being that I'm bringing to space? And then when you think about, okay, so I've got this phenomenon and phenomenon is like a miracle. It's like something that you, it's almost unexplainable. It's really a surprise. And that definitely defines you. You're amazing. And that is awesome. And awesome and amazing and surprising are all wonderful qualities. And they are things that we just like, we're like, we think of them as having a value. They're, they're, they're special in the best way. And so when you're special in the best way, 
you're bringing that to wherever you do, wherever you go and whatever you do, you bring it to class. You bring it, you bring it to the bathroom, you bring it to the, to the shower, you bring it to the bathtub, you bring it to the swimming pool, you bring it to, you bring it to, if you go, have a play day, you bring you. And you know, sometimes you feel a little, I feel a little tarnished. That means dull or not bright, not shiny. I'm kind of cranky and I don't bring that best part of myself. And so doing things that adjust that and get me out of that space and move me over to this space, that's to my advantage and it's to everybody's advantage. So let's say that the world is feeling cranky. How do we make it in, into a shiny place, into a polished, beautiful place, even more beautiful? So if our goal is solving cranky, that's one thing. And if our goal is to make it the best world possible, it's kind of another thing. It's like, are we running away from bad or are we running to good? Have you thought about it like that? Like, are you running away from hungry or you're running towards full? Are you running away from dirty or are you running to clean, to being clean? Are you running away from not being a good, not being a mathematician? Or are you running to being really good at math? These are really good ways of looking at everything. So are you running away from not being an astronaut or are you running to being an astronaut? See, see the difference? I'm not running away from, from not being an astronaut teacher. I'm running to being an astronaut teacher. I ran, but one time, once upon a time, I wasn't. I wasn't an astronaut teacher and I just started moving in that direction. So it's like one step at a time gets us to where we're going. All right. So look, we're going to, we're going to, let, let's get into this interview with, with our friend, Therese Jones, who is amazing. I got it set up and ready to go right here. All right. Let's do a quick pow, pow, pow. Get this straightened out. Pow, pow. All right, we are here with one of my very favorite people, Therese Jones, with the Satellite Industry of America. How are you today, Therese? I'm good, thanks. Thanks for being here. I'm really excited to talk to you and all the students. Yeah, we've got to work together a whole bunch of times in the past. We have, and you know, brought astronaut adventures to students all over the country. We did. We did astronaut job fair at in a, at the Fernbank Science Center in Atlanta together. That was really great. The students were super enthusiastic, and I think saw themselves as astronauts by the end of the day. Absolutely, and that's the most important thing I think is being able to see ourselves in roles and in jobs. Yes, but, definitely. But, well, so, what is what is your job? So I work with about 50 different space companies and I sort of translate between the companies and mostly the U.S. government, but we work sometimes with international governments too. And we talk about how to make new laws and rules in space. Um, so it's everything from when people are permanently living on the moon, how do we sort of share resources on the moon, um, to how to make sure space junk doesn't crash into um, itself and you know we don't want astronauts to be hit by things in space we want to keep space clean um, and then you know just making sure that people on earth get to use the benefits of space like you probably use GPS and a phone before to figure out where you're going um, people use images of earth to do things like not just look at weather obviously but to see how land use is changing to see you know places where there's deforestation and trees are being cut down and trying to figure out how to fix problems like that. How many satellites are in space right now? I think it's around 2,500 that are still active. Um, there are a lot of dead ones up there too, and that's a problem because they might run into other things. Can, any, can, anybody, can anybody put a satellite up? Yeah, so there are these satellites that are about 10 centimeters on the side. They're called CubeSats, so you know they're like this big. And we've even had elementary schools launch them into space before. Um, so space is really becoming accessible to the everyday person. And it's not just you know elementary schools in the United States. 
It's students from all over the globe. Um, I know students in Kenya recently launched one. So it's really becoming accessible to um, our friend, our friend Juan Jose Diaz Infante. He, he has a program where he teaches elementary school students and high school students how to build satellites out of everyday objects and common things so that everybody feels connected to space. I'm super excited to see even students, you know, be able to put their dreams in space. So today we've been talking about being an astronaut. Did you want to be an astronaut when you were a little, per a young, young, young kid? I really liked space. I was really into astronomy. So I saw myself being an astronomer more of an astronaut. Okay. What's the difference between astronomy and astrology? Um, astronomy is studying objects in space, how we got here, um, where we're going, how stars work, how planets are made. Um, I worked on galaxies and how they're built. So, you know, billions of stars um, and how they change over the history of the universe. Um, astrology, uh, some people think that the uh, where the sun is um, in the sky relative to the constellations and where the planets are um, can tell you about the future. Um, astronomers don't really believe in that component. So they're just two words that kind of sound alike, and they both are about stars uh, on the surface, but then one is really how something looks, and the other one is how something is more about science. Yes. Um, I mean, astronomy and astrology in history were very connected for a number of years by people who, uh, you know, ancient people who took very close observations of the planets relative to the stars. Um, and it was very important in religion, too. Um, but they've sort of diverged um, now that we have these great scientific instruments, um, both on Earth and in space. So astronomers has the word no in it. Like, no, I'm an astronomer. And astronomy uses telescopes. Yes, it does. Not, not all astronomers use telescopes, but a lot of them do. Um, a lot of people picture astronomers going outside every night and looking at the stars. Um, even astronomers who use telescopes often only use them a few nights a year. You do stay up all night uh, using you know, huge telescopes. There are some that are even 10 meters across very big um, and many stories tall but then they spend a lot of time on their computers looking at the data and trying to figure out what it means. Do astronomers become astronauts? Not too many astronomers become astronauts. They can be astronauts but NASA often looks for engineers, um, geologists, um, even teachers to become astronauts. There are a couple astronomer astronauts but more yeah, geosciences. So are a lot of engineers astronauts? There are a lot of astronauts who are engineers, yes. Um, and I think one cool thing about the space industry today is that there are a bunch of companies, commercial companies, that are about to launch people into space. So you won't even, you'll have people from a wide variety of backgrounds who will be able to go into space, not just those with the technical training, um, like NASA and other space agencies have traditionally taken. I always explain to students, and you and I have talked about how when students, when young students get to be our age or your age, uh, and that they will be able to be all kinds of different professions because we'll have space hotels and we'll have opportunities for people who are just regular people doing things that aren't astronauts. They're not astronauts, but they're space professionals. So they could be. They, we could have space, we're going to have space artists and space musicians and space dancers and space bakers and space construction workers and space firefighters and space plumbers and space grocery stores, maybe? Definitely. And one of the coolest concepts I've heard, you know, that actually might help promote hotels in space um, and different space stations for, you know, your everyday person is having um, sports competitions in space. Space so, sports. Space sports, and that could attract a lot of viewers around the world and would be very different challenges than playing any sports on Earth. 
I think I would be very interested in space sports. I'm not really interested in regular sports. I know a lot of students like cricket and soccer. And in the U.S., people like football and lacrosse and rugby and tennis. Tennis and space would be kind of amazing. <laughs> the ball would go really far. It would. And what if you had competitions on different planets, too, and you had to adjust to the gravity of different planets? I don't think we could have a competition on Jupiter. <laughs> yeah, I, don't, I think the tennis ball might not go very far. I think, we, I think the atmosphere is too dangerous. But I think uh, I, I, I have talked about having a swimming pool on the moon before. And because the gravity is so light that if we had a swimming pool on the moon, that if we were, you know how you're at the bottom of a pool and you launch yourself off from the bottom, you push yourself off and it pushes you up to the top and it can even, can even push you out of the water a little bit. So if, if we're on the moon and we push ourselves off the bottom of the pool on the moon, we launch out of the water like a dolphin and there's enough gravity that comes back. And so if we had a big enough pool, we could be like dolphins on the moon. I love it. That could be a new like synchronized swimming type of event too. It would be the most amazing ever. I think everybody would love to be swimming on the moon. Swimming on the moon. I'm in for that first moon pool. Moon pool. I'm going to buy that moonpool.com. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I think that we probably have to have some sort of big bubble to keep that atmosphere in. And, and um, I get though there's enough gravity that it would hold the water down, the water. And then um, I think that it would, oh, we could get the, we could get water from the, from the rock on from the ore on the moon we could extract the the h2o from the from the ore on the moon because a lot of meteors have hit the moon before that have brought water to the moon and there's a lot of water ice on the moon south pole too water ice moon moon ice yep there's another there's another business is making ice cream from moon ice <laughs> And, they, and, and the only place you can get it is to go to the moon. So somebody could open up a moon ice or a moon shave ice stand on the moon. And people go to Hawaii and get shave ice all the time because it's very famous. And so I think that moon, lunar shave ice is a winner. Do you know what else the moon ice is winning for? What? It's going to hopefully be used as rocket fuel to get oh. to other planets in the solar system. Oh. Like Mars. So you can split water into hydrogen and oxygen, and that's rocket fuel. So scientists so H right now. H2O has got hydrogen and it's got oxygen. So it's got a molecule of hydrogen and, a, and two molecules of oxygen. And we could split like it. it. <laughs> right? Yep. And then we get the hydrogen to do what? So hydrogen is used as rocket fuel. Um, so is oxygen. So they, you, you could split them apart, two hydrogens and an oxygen. And then if you had enough of it, you could use it as fuel for your rocket to get off the moon and get to Mars. And it's actually, yeah. So it's actually less expensive in terms of fuel to do that on the moon than it is to fly directly from Earth because the moon has so little gravity in comparison to Earth. Mm -hmm it's easier to launch from there to Mars. Because the hardest part about launching to space is how expensive it is to fight gravity to get up to space from Earth. And so there's so little gravity on the moon that it's easier to leave the surface to go up to space. Yep, even if you stop there first from Earth. Can we use the oxygen from, the, from that H2O to breathe? Yeah, you definitely could use that oxygen from the H2O to breathe. Hmm. And we could get that from the rocks that are on the moon. Yep. So there's another job because we could be a lunar miner, a lunar H2O miner or ice miner. And, and then, uh, then there is the science process of splitting the molecules of hydrogen and oxygen. So there's another job. There's all kinds of space jobs. So do you know any astronauts? I know a few astronauts, yes. Uh, and, 
is astronaut a job that you apply for? Is it a job? I, I kind of know the answer to this one. So the, it, do you do, a, does a person study to be an astronaut or do they study to be something else and then become an astronaut? They study to be something else and then become an astronaut. So right in this latest round when NASA was taking astronaut applications, um, they took people who had degrees in science and engineering um, or you know, were teachers. So those are the degrees right now NASA takes. But again, as all these commercial companies are starting to set up astronauts, they don't really care what degree you have. They'll take people from different backgrounds. But there are people who study, I mean, to become pilots. And that's another thing NASA looks for, is they often take people from the military in particular who have a lot of training on big planes and then teach them how to fly spaceships. I think that the new space jobs with the private space companies I think there's going to be a lot more opportunities than to just work at NASA. I know that a lot of people think that they want to be a NASA astronaut and that's, that's probably a good goal. If you want to be a NASA astronaut, if you want to be a space explorer on a, a better way to do it now that we have all these private space companies is to develop skills that people are going to use in space and then become the kind of person that people need to take to space. Definitely. I mean, we're trying to figure out a bunch of problems in space, like how to manufacture new things in space. That's a big one. What um, is it? How to manufacture different things in space. Oh, yes. So once you're up there, how do you build more things? There are a lot of companies working on 3D printing in space, but we'll Made probably in need space. Exactly. Made in space. I've, I've met them before, Made in Space. Have you met them before? I have. They are a wonderful company. It's pretty cool to use a laser printer to make stuff in space. That's another job. Somebody's got to fix the computers and then there's the materials used to use 3D printers and then somebody's got to put it all together. Those are more jobs. Yep. There's a lot of places to fit in when it comes to space exploration and, I, and I'm certain there's going to be a lot more by the time young students become your age or even my age. You know, another one that space job that I didn't really appreciate until more recently was there are people who do fabric like textiles mm. who are more trained in you know arts um, that have then designed materials for space whether it's spacesuits or they've designed satellites that can unfold in cool ways um, and I mean that's an area of the future too because we've got to figure out what people are wearing in space and figure out how to use new materials in you know microgravity and space fashion exactly you know Mae jemison who is the astronaut she was the first african she was the first woman to be african-american to go to space and she had a big conference at the johnson space center called 100 year starship and she introduced me to space fabrics and space textiles i think in 2012 and that was pretty much the first time that i thought of clothes and fabrics and textiles as part of space that's a good point. And there's going to be space seamstresses. As a matter of fact, we sewed, I know for a fact that we sewed all of the Apollo astronauts suits together. There was, there was people, women who did that. There are people who are women who did that, those jobs, built space suits. And I have a friend, Cameron at Pacific Space Flight, who builds space suits right now. Wow. Yeah, space, building space suits. People, he, and he's not rich, and he is not, he is not, um, like, there's not really a school for, for space suit maker, but he has somebody on his team who is an expert on textiles. So that's a great one. Really good reminder. Okay, so I think that's, a lot of information. I think that those are very useful explanations and shares that you've given us today, Therese. I really appreciate it. Well, I'm excited to see what space jobs these students take in the future. Do you have any suggestions or recommendations that could help a person achieve a goal that they're after? Well, I think space jobs are getting a lot more diverse. So I would definitely recommend studying, you know, whatever field that you're interested in, but then trying to figure out where, where it could be in the future and in space. 
Um, whether you're trying to fix problems on Earth, you can do a lot of that from space and observe things from space. Or if you want to be an astronaut and go to space, you can use your art skills. You can become a space musician mm. um, and just dream big. Mm. I agree. Dreaming big. Don't ever. I, I always I I always remind myself of that even is not to short, make my dreams small, is to make my dreams big. And it opens up my mind and my imagination to what is possible. And a lot of times when I do that, it helps other people too. Yeah, I mean, one of the great things about being in the space industry is that it's really easy to be inspired by just looking at all the people around you um, who are doing these super awesome things. Well, thank you very much for your, for joining us today on Astronaut Adventures. It was really cool. I always love I always love seeing you. I really really enjoy working with you. And I want to say thank you while I have you on for helping all the all the students that you help. I know you help a lot of people achieve their dreams. I really love working with students, and I'm looking forward to seeing some of the students who watch your show uh, in space. Cool. Okay. Thank you. Bye. See you next time, Therese. Hope you hope you join us again. I would love to. See you next time. Bye. Bye. That was awesome. Therese Jones. Yeah. Did you hear what she said at the end? That the, like, when I, when I, when I, well, first of all, did you see what shirt she was wearing? She was, a, she was wearing a Yuri's Night t-shirt. Yuri Gagarin is the first human being in space. And Yuri Gagarin went to space when we were really not, we didn't know anything about space really. Yuri Gagarin was the first human being in space, orbited the planet. And she had a Yuri Gagarin t-shirt on. So Yuri's Night, for that was, she had a Yuri's Night t-shirt. Yuri's Night is the big global space party that we have every year that Loretta Whiteside founded. And I get to work on and my friend Tim Bailey and my friend uh, uh, Christy Fair and and Ryan Robertson, uh, all of these wonderful people get to work on Yuri's Night, including Therese Jones. I think she was at the Yuri's Night party in Washington, D.C. People have Yuri's Night parties all over the planet every April 12th or right around there, near April 12th, but around April 12th. So that was cool. And then the other thing is, it, is the thing she said about how to become an astronaut. And it was, she said what I say is that skill, it's you develop the skills doing what you love. You just, you develop skills at doing what you love, whatever is the thing that you're really good at. Like some people are fantastic writers. Some people are fantastic at math. Some people are amazing at art. Some people are great athletes. So develop the skill that you're amazing at. Deve follow your interests, do the thing that you love. That's what you're going to be bringing to astronautics. And another thing, and when doing that, there's, there's another side to this. So believe it or not, once, once I was, once I was not terrific at mathematics, once I, once I wasn't, once I, once I wasn't great at math. And so I, I, uh, it just didn't click in my head for some reason. And then I really thought about it. I'm like, why is math not clicking in my head? It was specifically algebra at the time. And so then I realized I'm not real, I'm not concentrating on it the way that I can. And if I'm doing it and it's not working, did I get to try it a different way? So I tried all these different ways to understand math and finally I landed on one that made sense for me. And that's when I became a math late. Now I love math. So <laughs> you get to, if there's something that you're, okay, so you get to pursue the things that you love and that's what this, that's the skills. You're going to develop the things you love into skills and talents. It's like you have a natural talent and when you, and when you practice it, it becomes a skill. Like some people are better at things at some things. Like some people just, I, have you seen people that can just draw? Oh my gosh. I mean, wow. And then there's those of us who we can, we can do it. We just have to practice at it. And so, Oh yeah, you know what? It reminds me. Remember the space cat? Let's let's look at the space cat for a second. Remember the last space cat? So we've I've drawn a space cat every single day. I mean, every single class this week. It was here, paka paka, paka paka. All right. Remember space cat? All right. So and what I did was, and this is this is all about practicing. This is this is really about that. Let's do this. Let's bring this over here. 
set ourselves up for success. Okay, so remember what I did? I went right over here and I, I said, I, I Googled cat face. I think I Googled cat face. Yeah, remember that cat right there? Remember that cat right there? And then I, <laughs> look at this, look at this cat face right here. <laughs> Can you see that? <laughs> That's a pretty good one. All right, remember this first cat face? This reminds me of my cat, George. George is my favorite cat. And, uh, I love George so much. And let's, let's, get, let's get this open up and check out this, this cat right here. There we go. Look at that. So then you practice drawing anything and you become really good at it. So this cat face, I remember that I remember the cat that I drew. First of all, I drew it kind of small. So let's let's get really into the game right here. The very first thing is draw this nose right here. Okay. All right. And then this part right here. This part right here. There's a nostril right here. I mean, do you remember the first one I drew? And now we're, this is the third, this is the third version of our space cat. And I think having a cat in space is a really cool idea. I think the cats in space would be very successful as creatures. Monkeys work really well in space. Have you seen space monkeys? Yes, yeah, space monkeys is a thing. So I'm gonna go right here, this is a little dark right here. No, and then don't forget this. This is like a, a moon-shaped eye. And then this part right here is very important. Cat's got this kind of, like they call it a moon shape. Ooh, look at that eye. Look at that. This is so good. All right. And same deal over here. Okay, I'm gonna put a little more over here. Cool, and then right here, we got this little, um, and then I look, I follow up and see where it goes. Kind of goes right there, and then same deal over here. This one goes over here, right here. And then right here, they got, cat's got cheekbones. Cat's got cheekbones. And then top part, ears. So the interesting thing, I draw the top of the head right here. And then this part right here, this ear. And then this part right here. And then the angles comes to a point goes back up, out, over, and then the ear right here, and then that right there. All right, I hear you, I hear you. We got time. And then there's some stripes right here. And then, oh, we forgot whiskers. Whiskers are very important for cats. Whiskers are add balance to a cat. Okay, look at that. Oh, wait, have you been missing this this entire time? I'm so sorry. Look at that. Look at this new space cat. Like I paid close attention to the eyes and the shape of the eyes. See, you can really tell. Like I paid close attention to it. And you can see how I followed the lines. Like here's the shape of the mouth and here's the shape of the nose and here's the shape of the eyes. And then the stripes at the top of the head and then the shape of the ears. And then I could even put some, it looks like a 
a little bit like that right there. And there you go. And that looks more like, and it, remember what it looked like at the beginning and look at what it looks like now? And that comes strictly from practice. And this is, I know we're drawing a space cat, but the point of, I know it, it doesn't seem like it's connected to astronautics, but that's not the case at all. It's called doing the same thing over and over. That's repetition. And each one is different, so they're not uniform. They're, they're, I repeat the process, I repeat the process, and that's how we become good at anything. It doesn't matter if it's soccer, or if it's arithmetic, or if it's drawing, or if it's cooking. The only way to be good at all of this stuff is to keep on doing it repetitively. We, we practice and we practice and we practice. So, this reminds me of, our, of the skills. Remember the skills that I was talking about? Excuse me, um, how can I be an astronaut? Here's how you do it, be smart. Use skills, use manners, use actions, use resolve, and use team. I'm, I've adjusted this yet again. Remember, we, we upgraded it on, Tuesday, on Wednesday, and we're upgrading it now. I put some more thought into it, and I want you to take this away. And this is going to be, this is the one we're going to use. This balances out. Okay. Here it is. So... We're just, this time we're not erasing. This used to be that this used to be announced and we turned into action because announcing is an action. So practice develop skills. How to be an astronaut. This is it. Third day of astronaut training this week. How to be an astronaut part one. How to be an astronaut part two. How to be an astronaut part three. And each day we each day we talked about this. S-M-A-R-T, smart, be smart. That's how you get to be an astronaut, by being smart. And, and smart is skills, manners, action, resolve, and team. So here's what, we're gonna, here's what we're gonna change a little bit. We're gonna change resolve into, we're gonna add something to it. We're gonna add resolve, rinse, and repeat. So we're turning smart into smart, like a pirate. You're being pirate smart. Skills, manners, action, resolve, rinse, repeat. And when I say resolve, rinse, repeat, it means practice repetition. Resolve, rinse, and repeat is repetition. So you make the resolution, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna draw a space cat, and I'm gonna do it one space cat every day, and I'm gonna resolve to do that. I make a resolution, I make a commitment, I'm absolute for sure. Or I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to grow up to be an astronaut. I'm going to live, work, and play in space. I am going to be one of the first human heirs that Mike Mongo talks about. I am going to be one of the first human heirs that Mike Mongo talks about. That's what you can say. You can make that resolution. And then you practice it. And then once you, you do something, to make, you make that resolution. Well, I'm drawing a space cat. I drew a space cat. I get to practice it again. So I rinse, I shake off, I, I start, I, I get ready to do it again and then I repeat it. So I drew my space cat, which started as a robot cat, then it turned into a regular cat, now it's a space cat. And then it evolved, and each time it shifted. So that's the important thing. Remember, I reminded you of this, that these, the things we do, we get to be flexible, we get to shift. Because we may start out one way, a seed for an apple tree starts out one way, and then it grows into an apple tree, and then it has apples, Look at the, how it changes and shifts to make the thing that it was after in the first place. An apple seed doesn't get to be an apple unless it, go, it has to go, it has to germinate, it has to be in the ground, it has to get water, it has to grow, it has to take time to develop branches, and then it becomes mature, it bears fruit, and then you have your apple. And we're like that. So we're the seed and we make the decision. We want to be an apple. If we're a seed and we want to be an apple, we have to go through that. We get to go through the steps of being a tree. So we get to we get to resolve. That's what we're going to do. I want to be an astronaut. We're going to do what it takes. Practice skills, manners, take action, and be good on a team. And then we're going to we're going to after we do that, we're going to shake it off. We're going to rinse off. We're going to get ready to do it all over again, and we're going to repeat. Neil Armstrong, one of the most famous astronauts ever to have lived, did not 
just become a pilot and become an astronaut. Neil Armstrong did, did all of these different piloted jets, piloted another jet, practiced engineering, went to do all kinds of, uh, all kinds of training outside of, of the military and outside of being a jet pilot, and then brought all of those skills to the application process for astronaut. And this is in the 60s, long time ago, 1960s. And now the process has completely evolved. So you're not going to have to, you don't have to become a jet pilot to become an astronaut. You get to develop the thing that you love. What if you want to be a veterinarian? Because we need space veterinarians. So in order to do that, you develop those skills and you develop and you keep on doing that. You develop a skill, you rinse off, you shake off, and you repeat the process to develop another skill. The more skills you bring to it. The more practice you have at your skill, the better your opportunity is for being an astronaut. And every time you do that, it sets you apart from people who quit right here. Resolution, when you decide, this is my goal, I'm gonna be an astronaut, how to be an astronaut. This is the question you ask me most of all, how can I? And in this case, it's be an astronaut. How can I? And in this case, it's be an astronaut. And, I'm, and, and you got to be smart. You got to you got to have skills. You got to have manners. You got to take action. You got to have resolve. Rinse and repeat. Do it again. Make another resolution. Make another revolu resolution. When I say rinse, it means take a break. When we let, let let's say every day is astronaut training, and you're a student. So part of your day, the rinsing part is the showering part for sure. Personal hygiene is majorly important. You do not get to go anywhere if people think you stink. It doesn't matter if you think you stink. It matters what I think. It matters what the people around you think. If people around you say you need to bathe or brush your teeth or your breath isn't bad, because sometimes like, like uh, when I remember I used to drink coffee, and my, it would change my breath. And my friend was like, oh, you've got coffee breath. And then I'd be like, oh, thank you for like me know. And I would go and rinse or brush my teeth. So that would be the rinse of that. And then I would reset, repeat. So then I get to have the conversation again. Not that I made a mistake, I'm just getting better and better and better. Resolve, rinse, repeat. Resolve, rinse, repeat. Resolve, rinse, do it again. Resolve, rinse, do it again. Resolve, rinse, do it again. So we, like every time I put on a new shirt, I'm getting ready every time I do a new show. I, in between, I rinse, I eat, I chill, I relax, I go for a swim, I practice exercise, I learn, I practice my drawing, I practice my letters. These are important things. So there was one other thing, the team. Now I'm going to change that one too. Team work. So our message now, our, our formula, let's call it what it is. The smart formula and this is the the smart formula is how you get to be an astronaut by practicing the smart formula skills develop skills we got that right manners manners I'm not telling you I'm having a conversation with you when you see a, a somebody and they ask you a question you can say yes ma'am or no ma'am. It is the simplest thing you can do. You can say please and thank you. And notice when you don't. Notice how it's like a laziness that we practice. We practice laziness. So we can practice laziness or we can practice success. Please and thank you are a superpower. Yes sir. No sir. Yes ma'am. No ma'am. Say it. I don't care what anybody else thinks. You're going to be saying it anyway. So if you can start saying it now, it's going to give you that critical competitive advantage, which allows you to get to be an astronaut. Skills, manners, actions. Take actions. You're watching this show. You're, excuse me, this, you're part of this classroom. You're taking action right now. Maybe you're going to get out of this and you're going to start practicing some of the things we talk about. Maybe you're a computer programmer, computer programmer and you're going to start practicing some coding. Maybe you're going to start practicing coding. Coding. How come I haven't talked about that a lot? Holy smokes, you think we don't need coders in space? We sure do. People, people do all kinds of coding when they're doing Minecraft. You don't think that that helps? It helps. Skills, manners, actions, take actions, make, write letters, make calls, ask questions. How can I be an astronaut? Ooh. 
Good one. Resolve. I am going to be an astronaut. My name is, and I am going to be an astronaut. You announce that. You declare it. Call it forth. You got this. I'm empowering you to do this. Resolve, rinse, repeat, and then do it again. The next person you say, oh, I just told this person. I'm going to tell this person. Remember our friend Alyssa Carson? Alyssa Carson said, declare and announce your intention to everybody you meet. If you want to go to space, if you want to be an astronomer like, like Therese was talking about today, announce and declare your intention because you never know when you're going to find an ally or an accomplice. An accomplice is somebody who's going to be there with you th through the whole ride. An ally is somebody who holds the door open for you. Resolve, rinse, repeat. Do it again, do it again. Say it again to the next person. Take action. Resolve, rinse, repeat. Re resolve is commitment. It is okay to feel like you want to quit. It is okay even to quit and then get back on, the, get back on tomorrow. They say get back, get back in the saddle. It could be like a bike. Get back on the bike. If you fall off a bike and you quit, it's okay. I quit, I'm done. And get back on tomorrow. I, that's being upset and being true to the moment is okay as long as you get back up and do it again tomorrow no matter what you said a minute ago that's resolution and then finally teamwork you cannot do this alone me and you are working together as a team right now hey me and you are you and me we are working together as a team right now You're already practicing this. Are you helping at the house? Are you, are you helping with your sister? Are you helping with your brother? Are you helping with your cousins? Are you helping with your grandmother? Are you helping with your mom? Are you helping with your dad? Are you helping with your uncle? Are you helping with your neighbor? When you see somebody who needs help, do you run to help them? That's, this is being a team player. It doesn't, you don't come naturally this way. None of us come great at this stuff. We all practice it. Those are developing skills. The smart formula takes practice. Resolve, rinse, and repeat. Just to, to, to decide this is what I'm going to do, and it's not going to be easy. And everything worth everything that's hard is worth everything that's worth doing is hard. And then you get it, and it's yours, and nobody can take it away from you. That's an awesome power. The smart formula: skills, manners, actions, resolve, rinse, repeat, and teamwork. And you can just say skills, manners, action, resolve, and teamwork. How to be an astronaut. You know what resolution is? Listen to this. Let me share something with you. This is super important. It means I'll never quit. I'll never quit in encouraging you to be a, a, a space explorer. I'll never quit. I'll never give up on you. I believe in you. You've got me with you this entire time. From here on out, I am in your corner, guaranteed 100%. For sure, for the rest of your life. You might make mistakes, I'm going to help you through them. And when you have successes, I'm going to celebrate them with you. You're a champion. You're leading the way, not just for me, but for all of us. You are a champion. You're leading the way, not just for me, not just for you, but for all of us. And I celebrate you and I'm going to be with you. You can count on me. And there's other people around you, people you haven't even met, who you are going to be able to count on for the rest of your life because we can depend on you. And that's teamwork. Never quit. Never give up. Never surrender. You're a champion. You are amazing. You cause amazement. You make us all proud. When we see you, we cheer. That's a leader. And I am grateful to have you in, in my life. We've been waiting for you this entire time. Glad you made it. Now let's get ourselves to the future because it's going to be awesome. And that's it. This has been our week of how to be an astronaut. You keep up the good work. This is the beginning. We start here. Smart, manners, action, resolve, teamwork. The smart formula. And you are smart. I love you.
I love you. And I hope you love a lot of people around you and I hope there's a whole bunch of people just like me who love you as much as I do. Thanks for being here. In the words of our people, as we always say when we are departing from one another, pa pa pow. See you Monday.